Now let's get back into the formative years because there's there's some substance up in here. There's some real substance. I can hear the Southern Twelve, the Southern Twain. Um, I, I'm trying to think if you're definitely the first person I feel like that I, that's homegrown Mississippi on on Catch the Moment podcast. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, tell me about um, that part. You know, like like that w- because. Everything that's happened, I would easily within the last three to five years, mm-hmm. um, you know, we, we could even go back to the to the it was it the riverboat brawl in Alabama. No. I mean, like, I mean, <laughs> Mississippi is the hot spot, but I'm only I, I'm really shaping that in relation to what that must have been like in the character formation. So, talk to me about what life was like and how some of that of uh, those formative years growing up in Mississippi was really shaping you as a, as a young lady and as an individual? I definitely am grateful and thank, thankful for my, my Southern upbringing. I truly am because really I did grow up with, without locking doors mm. and for, for my growing up, and I do pride myself, and one thing I can say, I, people that, that know me know I pride myself in being an authentic Southern Belle. Mm-hmm. But how, however, I did grow up in a in a state that is most the most racist state, mm-hmm. and being that now that when we we reached the the place of the the BLM place for me that for me as a person growing up yeah. in Mississippi not not to d- dismiss George Floyd and, and everyone else I felt like that was kind of not say a smack in the face I I felt like that social media only publicized that for others correct and the, we have a long way to go I don't think that we anything will ever change. I only think that we, we as, we as a place, we as a people in Mississippi, we, we still have a long way to go. And Mm -hmm. that's what I have to say as far as a person growing up in Mississippi, I knew that, that I was not, that was it was not destined for me to stay in Mississippi. Yeah. And that that is that was <laughs> I know from my experiences, I cannot I cannot stay in Mississippi. I do have classmates that stayed, but mm-hmm. yeah, I knew that I could not stay in Mississippi so in t- that type of situation. So I mean like uh, and I, I I can know you have those 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 real confronted what were one or two experiences in were any of them traumatic for you? Because I, I mean, like sometimes we, um, you know, having the mind of an overcomer mm-hmm. can can kind of like reduce the reality of how traumatic or um, impactful, right? Because it doesn't have to be always traumatic, even, but even if it's deeply impressionable or impactful. So mm-hmm. what was one of the two experiences for you as a young African-American lady, right? You talk about some of the most vulnerable um, people groups in general as minorities, um, there, there's few more, more vulnerables, especially in a state like Mississippi. So what were some of those experiences mm-hmm. and how did you overcome them and what was your safety net? I remember as a young girl seeing a Klan march when in my, my hometown in Main Street. That's one thing that I would never forget. I I remember calling a friend that a white friend, mm-hmm. and I remember his dad calling me a nigger. And I also remember that same friend telling me that he would not date anyone darker than darker than me. And for me, that was a slap in the face because for that friend. To tell me that, I I said to myself that that friend is still racist because for you to say that, you 
you still have racist tendencies. So there's there's key things that I had in my mind that was still were forever be in my mind growing up as uh, a black girl mm-hmm. in Mississippi. There there is people I know that I went to school with or I grew up I grew up around. They may not outwardly said certain things or did sure. certain things, sure, but certain things were low key or hitting. Sure. So. And it's certain certain things were hushed, and I knew certain people that also that had kids, but these kids were hidden, and so these kids were adults, <laughs> which was crazy. <laughs> these kids were, and I was just like, "This is crazy," you know. Looking at, I'm like, "These kids were hidden until they were like school age." Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I I can imagine. I tell people <laughs> like, you know, um. Obviously, we're all, you know, I think if if you actually have a, a strong value system that's based on truth and love, then you're, um you know, it's, it's, it's just good old MLK civil rights, you know, yeah. treating people on the basis of their character, but that's not everybody. And um so it really boils down to how are you training your children? Like, and I, I, I said, like, you know, um, growing up in the North, it was, it was, it was, you know, you can, you know, I tell people like, Kids are the best. I mean, like, you can discern. Like, kids, you can you can kind of get the fact that people are uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right? Like, discomfort levels. And, and that, while it might not always allude to overt racism, it, it alludes to the fact that they're not comfortable with this relationship yet. Mm-hmm. So I don't always accuse everyone of racism, you know, and I think, um, I always tell my kids, he who desires, the, he who desires friends must first be friendly. Right. So um, are you going to choose to be the neighbor? Are you mm-hmm. going to choose to be the friend? Are you going to choose to be the one who loves? And if so, pe- and you can only give people right. If people reject you. That's whatever the basis of that rejection is. That just is. That just means that's not your people. Mm-hmm. And um, but it is a lesson. And I, I can't imagine learning a, a lesson like that at that stage is such a profound, more direct and potentially costly way. Right. Like mm-hmm. you talk about the history of the of the clan and, and the history of the state of Mississippi. Um, I'm amazed. Like I said, we, we, we're in a similar, you know, similar age bracket. It's like, I, I, I didn't experience any of that. I'm like, <laughs> that's insane to me. Like, that's yeah. really, really insane to me. So, um, 